Hi, in this video I will explain the consequences of gravitational fields on the orbits of planets and satellites. A planet is kept in orbit around a star by a centripetal force provided by gravitation. We know that centripetal force, F, is equal to m omega squared r, where omega, the angular velocity, is equal to 2 pi divided by t, the time period for the orbit. So this gives us f equals m 4 pi squared r divided by t squared. We can equate this force to the gravitational force using Newton's law of gravitation. So 4m pi squared r divided by t squared is equal to Newton's law of gravitation g mm divided by r squared. Rearranging and cancelling m gives us 4 pi squared r cubed is equal to g m t squared. Since for a given star m is constant, this can be expressed as r cubed is proportional to t squared. This is known as Kepler's third law. The square of the orbital period of a planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit. It was thanks to Kepler's observation of this pattern that Newton was able to develop his law of gravitation. For a satellite to orbit another body, whether that's a planet around a star or a moon or artificial satellite around a planet, it needs to have a particular velocity in order to maintain circular motion. Again, equating our centripetal force, this time mv squared over r, with Newton's law of gravitation, g m m divided by r squared, we can simplify this to v squared is equal to g m divided by r. Since kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared, we can substitute v squared in here to get half m g m over r, or if we tidy this up a little bit, g m m divided by r. So that's the kinetic energy of an orbiting satellite. But the satellite's also got gravitational potential energy, which we know from an earlier video to be equal to minus g m m divided by r. So therefore the total energy of the satellite will be minus g m m divided by r, the gravitational potential energy, plus the kinetic energy, g m m divided by 2r, which leaves us with a total energy of minus g m m divided by 2r. This equation tells us the total energy needed for an object to remain in orbit around the planet. Let's consider a particular type of satellite, a geosynchronous satellite. This is a satellite that will always remain over the same location on the Earth's surface. This is particularly useful for communication satellites, such as Sky TV. It means that a sky dish on a home can always be pointing towards the satellite. Geosynchronous or geostationary satellites achieve this by having an orbit that follows the rotation of the Earth, that is a time period of 24 hours. If we substitute this time period in seconds into our Kepler's third law equation from earlier, we can determine the orbital radius that geostationary satellites must be placed at. This gives us a radius of 4.2 million metres from the centre of the Earth. Finally, let us consider a value known as escape velocity. If we fired a bullet vertically upwards with a high enough velocity, it should be able to escape the Earth's field. To simplify things, we'll assume that air resistance is negligible. How fast must the bullet be fired? The bullet will need enough kinetic energy to overcome the gravitational potential energy on the Earth's surface. So kinetic energy, half mv squared, is equal to big G, 
big M, little m, divided by R. So this is the potential energy on the Earth's surface, and this is the kinetic energy that we'll need to provide in order to at least match that. Rearranging, this gives us V squared is equal to 2 gm over R. So V is equal to the square root of 2 gm divided by R. Substituting in the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, and the universal gravitational constant, we get which gives us v is equal to 11.2 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. The bullet would have to be fired at 11,200 meters per second in order to escape the Earth's gravitational field, and that's assuming no air resistance. At any value below that, the bullet will eventually fall back to Earth, so watch your head.